Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Anana Sayo. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving Marine Works team uh, uh, this chance to present our ideas, uh, how to approach challenges of the two Ds. Uh, thank you, Francis, for the earlier introduction. Okay, so uh, I will not uh, go deep inside the uh, regulations. I bet uh, the slide which you could see and the background information which it is based upon uh, will appear in many presentations uh, during this conference. Uh, but what I want to point out that uh, there are actions which has to be done now. Uh, so it is not anymore a distance objective, but uh, things which has to be addressed by the maritime community today. So it is not only about regulations anymore. Our stakeholders, our best friends, uh, customers and car cargo owners, insurance companies, banks, ports, manufacturers, they are looking uh, at the uh, green uh, shipping very seriously. Uh, through their own way of uh, uh, addressing it, uh, through um, interest at how uh, maritime industry uh, coping with uh, the GSG strategy. So uh, we may anticipate that uh, those uh, ship owners and ship managers who uh, achieve better progress uh, with uh, uh, CO2, um, uh, CO2 emission reduction will have some privilege in uh, commercial. So. Uh, one may be uh, completely lost in the number of digital technologies available already. As uh, Francis pointed out, uh, uh, which of them are helpful? As uh, Jeb pointed out, there are too many standards. Uh, with the uh, help of a consultant firm called Titius, uh, a UK-based company, uh, they come up with a summary of uh, digital technologies available today for uh, ship owners and ship managers uh, by the uh, relevance and impact. Uh, basically, uh, the idea is that there are too many technologies and um, uh, some companies uh, already for many years implementing uh, many of these quite successfully. But for those who are just starting, uh, the very basic question is, so where do I go from here? Uh, which technology do I choose uh, and how do I implement it? So uh, we were trying to come up with a common denominator. Basically, any of these technologies uh, require a very uh, first step, which is a, a starting of uh, data collection. Without data collection, without um, uh, records and storage of this data, it is sure uh, you're basically navigating blind. You don't know your history, you cannot predict your uh, future. And uh, data collection quite naturally uh, linked with the cybersecurity aspects. As soon as data start flying between the vessel and uh, uh, the uh, sure cloud, uh, cybersecurity aspect uh, appear and need to be considered. Uh, so uh, when you start collecting the data, you may start measuring, start analyzing and take actions. Uh, in fact, uh, why I call data collection a common denominator for any digital technologies at sea? Uh, because it does not really matter uh, which uh, technology you will implement in which uh, sequence. Uh, data is a technology agnostic, so you may use the data uh, for safety, for uh, fuel optimization, for uh, prediction of your trends, etc. So it will not be a failure anyhow if you uh, start doing that. Uh, now, uh, depending on the uh, capacity of, uh, of the fleet, um, I uh, put here three uh, potential tires, like uh, um, vessels uh, which uh, could fall on tire one, uh, either because of age or because of the uh, ship owner or fleet manager capacity, uh, you cannot implement any smart technologies on board. So the question is, are you out of the game? Uh, the answer not at all. There are plenty full of open data sources such as AIS logs, uh, uh, weather archives, uh, Clarkson database, uh, new reports, uh, etc., uh, which allow uh, digital technologies to be applied and analytics to be applied without you doing literally anything whatsoever. So, I mean, uh, uh, open sources are good enough uh, to give your preliminary analysis and ideas uh, what could you do. 
Uh, then uh, we have the retrofit ready vessels. So uh, either technically or financially, uh, ship ownership managers are willing to install uh, sensors to uh, achieve what we call a high frequency data flow. And when you may collect much uh, higher volume of data, uh, and obviously your anal analytics uh, will be more reliable. Uh, naturally, uh, tire-free, uh, those new builds, uh, which uh, was born uh, with uh, high-frequency data flow from on board to the shore. So this is just the idea, uh, one example of how the data could be used to uh, deliver your tangible implication uh, from a uh, point of view of uh, um, uh, analytical result. Uh, using uh, fancy technologies such as AI and uh, deep learning. Uh, so, for example, based on the uh, AS data analysis uh, and uh, uh, weather uh, data, uh, historical weather data, you may receive uh, uh, enough information for RPM profile optimization, uh, input for just-in-time arrival, uh, hull and propeller degradation effect and uh, actions, etc. Making digital twin uh, and uh, using MRV and DCS reports, uh, you may act uh, for uh, ship energy uh, management planning, digitalization, and various other optimizations. So, uh, I mean, you are unlimited with the data um, uh, from point of view of analytics. So, these are another example. And uh, I started with this CII uh, trending and uh, 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 trading and calculation. So, uh, based upon simple noon reports and uh, AS track, uh, you may already have very decent ideas of what will be your uh, CII grade this year and what will be the trend. Uh, fleet benchmarking, including uh, benchmarking within your own fleet and benchmarking with external vessels will naturally become possible. Uh, hull and propeller degradation effect, again, uh, analytics may suggest when is the best time to do uh, hull cleaning or repainting. So, uh, again, um, uh, this is a rather technical diagram uh, which you may uh, read uh, in the book, but the idea is that uh, uh, left bottom corner suggests that for uh, old and legacy vessels, uh, you literally can uh, do nothing. Through simple software API and open data, you may already have enough information to proceed with analytics. Or you may choose to install uh, sophisticated IoT-ready uh, uh, components on board, and uh, receive high-frequency data. Uh, at our boot, uh, on we as a whole, uh, you see the example of uh, such system uh, installed uh, with one of our customers. Uh, to give you some ideas, uh, we also report up to seven gigabyte of the data per day. Uh, that is, of course, including uh, live CCTV and uh, uh, screen captures of Agdis and Radar, but nevertheless, this is quite a uh, high volume of data for analysis. And uh, um, uh, you, uh, basically, when you, uh, obviously, I, I want to uh, call you in for the high-frequency uh, data implementation, because that is where you're going to receive a real-time uh, information uh, for your uh, CO2 emission and possibility to uh, know and watch the implication real-time uh, for individual vessels and for the entire fleet. And then, um, uh, basically, uh, how these technologies could be helpful. Uh, naturally, uh, most of uh, technologies available today will ensure that you will comply with the regulations. Uh, but also, uh, if you watch back to the economical factor, like how it could help you to save uh, money or to earn more money from point of view of uh, fuel uh, savings and CO2 emission reduction, uh, here are some ideas uh, how much uh, each of the available technologies could bring you in in terms of savings. Uh, uh, this is it. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your, your attention. Kamsamdida.